good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris from New York. And uh, no, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Still in Westchester County? Apparently trapped in a Truman show of your own making, where the world is flat and the sun's a spotlight? Well, Christopher, from my spherical perspective, it's time for a reality check, so, uh, let's rock and roll. Shut up and sit down, you big ball f Please subscribe. Anyway, um... Just a couple quick things. Today's a Friday. I like to give you something to think about on a Friday. Okay, what thought-provoking topic have you got for us? Let's get those mental gears turning. Hello? Where, where is everybody? I, I'm the only brain cell left. Just in case if I'm unable to uh, put a video out on a weekend. No, oh, are you worried about us missing your flat earth wisdom? Like we'd be lost without your daily dose of geographical delusion. Chris, you're like a doomsday prepper, but instead of cans. Chris, you're like a doomsday prepper, but instead of can. <laughs> Chris, you're like a doomsday prepper, but instead of canned goods, you're hoarding conspiracy theories. Nailed it. The real world provides us with endless topics, like the actual science that shows us how completely impossible the flat earth is. Yes, science! Where people just... I don't understand how they can't understand a, refre a, a reflection. Oh, so we're diving into optical physics now, are we? It's rich that you're questioning other people's understanding of reflections, though, considering you seem to be reflecting a reality that doesn't exist. Thing is, Chris, reflections work on curved surfaces, too. That's how we see the sun reflecting off the ocean, even when it's setting over the horizon of a spherical Earth. It's not magic, it's just basic optics. But I guess when you're busy trying to make a flat disc explain everything, even simple reflections become a conspiracy. Maybe if you spent less time staring at your own flat earth echo chamber and more time looking at actual science, you'd understand how light works. Or, you know, maybe just accept that the world isn't a mirror reflecting your delusions. So there's this... Okay. Why can't people understand that? I mean, that, that the sun is not a tangible object. Saying the sun is not tangible is like saying a nuclear explosion isn't energetic. It's a giant ball of plasma, a swirling inferno of hydrogen undergoing nuclear fusion. It's as tangible as a star can be. We can measure its mass, its temperature and its output. You can even feel its warmth from 93 million miles away. Or are you going to claim that that's just a reflection as well? And people want me to prove it to them. You mean they don't just believe you because you said that? What the hell is wrong with people? But prove to me that the sun is a star. Why should we? Seems pretty pointless to go into a long scientific explanation as to why the sun is a star when you were programmed to reject anything a person with a different opinion to you thinks or says. But I will say this, Chris. It's not a spotlight. It's not a hologram, and it's definitely not powered by your disbelief. It's a star, plain and simple. Now, can we move on to something a little bit more challenging? Like explaining why you think gravity is just a suggestion? Because you've never seen a star, you don't know what a star looks like. First, Chris, yes, we have seen stars. Every time we look up at the night sky, those little pinpricks of light, they are stars, and yes, I've seen them through telescopes which magnify them, revealing their true nature. Second, what a star really looks like? Well, we've got images of them from telescopes like Hubble and James Webb, showing stars in all their glory. We've got spectrographs that analyze their light, telling us the composition and temperature. We've got models based on physics that accurately predict their behavior. So yeah, we know exactly what stars look like. Because nothing up there is real. It's all fake. Dribble! So, so the universe with its billions of galaxies and trillions of stars and countless planets is just a cosmic illusion designed to hide the shape of the Earth. I'm guessing you think that the James Webb Telescope is just a really expensive Photoshop plug-in then. You know, for CGI. So when somebody asks me to prove to them that that's a reflection, then you prove to me that that's a star 93 million miles away. So you want me to prove something you refuse to accept? 
when you can't even prove your own ridiculous claims. Now, I'll happily prove that the sun is a star when you can prove that stars are just reflections. Until then, maybe stick to things you can actually demonstrate, Chris. Like, I don't know, how to wear a tinfoil hat properly without obstructing your vision. And that's a moon 268,000 miles away. While I can clearly zoom in on one of the craters over there that's supposedly 40 miles away. That is impossible. So you're saying that because you can zoom into a crater on the moon, which you claim is 268,000 miles away, and that crater is supposedly 40 miles wide, which is what I assume you meant to say, that that's impossible. Okay, first of all, the moon is about 238,000 miles away on average, not 268,000, but <laughs> what's a few thousand miles between friends, right? Secondly, telescopes exist. They magnify distant objects. That's their entire purpose. You can zoom in on craters because they're huge and telescopes are powerful. What you were saying is that you can't see a football field from a mile away because it's too far, but with binoculars, you can see every blade of grass. Telescopes are just super powerful binoculars for space. Sorry about the moon footage yesterday. It kind of was, it just, you know, when it's full like that and you see this perfect circle and it just illuminates everything, just like the, you know, just like the sun does um, in the middle of the night. You know, it's like 11 o'clock, 1130 at night and, and you look over, it's, it's like daylight. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The moon reflects sunlight, CC. It does not generate its own light. That's why we see phases. It's the changing angle of the sun's light reflecting off the moon's surface. And yes, the full moon does illuminate the night, but it's a fraction of the sun's intensity. See, that is not reflecting anything, okay? That is illuminating itself, okay? That, that's, what it, that's what it is, that's what it's doing. It is physically impossible to have a solar system. And yet here we are living quite happily in our own solar system. A physically impossible solar system, according to CC. Chris, we've discovered thousands of exoplanetary systems with planets orbiting other stars. We've observed them forming in nebulae. We have detailed data on how gravity and angular momentum cause them to coalesce. To say they're impossible, or to say that the moon is impossible, is to ignore a mountain of evidence, or as we call it around here, to be a flat earther. With gravity spinning around in this perfect dance, that's been going on for billions of years. Yes, it's been going on for billions of years, but it's not perfect. It's messy, chaotic, and full of collisions, explosions, and black holes swallowing everything in their path. So it's more like a cosmic mosh pit than a perfect waltz. Physically, that is impossible. Physically, it is impossible to have something standing still like lake water, like glass when we're spinning at a thousand miles per hour. You think because a lake looks calm, the Earth can't be rotating. Chris, that's like saying a train can't be moving because your coffee isn't spilling. You're confusing local phenomena with global phenomena. A lake's stillness doesn't disprove the Earth's rotation any more than a still cup of coffee disproves a moving train. In fact, no, hang on a second. In fact, I'm wrong. It does prove one thing, Chris. It proves that you're an idiot. But don't just take my word for it. <laughs> and we're traveling at a half a million miles per hour up to the with with with, with the sun, and I don't know millions of miles per hour with the with with the galaxy. I mean. It's impossible physically. You're acting like we should feel this speed, like we should be thrown off the earth, but that isn't how physics works. Inertia keeps us moving with the earth, which is moving with the solar system, which in turn is moving with the galaxy. Everything moves together. That's why we don't feel it. This is a lie that they have come up with. Okay, this is a lie that they have come up with 
to make you feel like you're insignificant and you're worthless. Oh, really? I had no idea. I feel bad now. I had no idea that their whole plan was to make everyone else in the world feel like flat earthers. You're insignificant and you're worthless. Okay? And that's what they want you to feel like. All right? And they want you to feel anger. They feed off of this. They want you to feel scared. Okay? They want you to be miserable. Yeah, but all those things perfectly describe a flat earther. So why are you bringing it up? And why, more importantly, do you all put yourself through this? There is no version of reality where the flat earth is even a possibility. So just give it up. No, don't give it up because then I wouldn't have anything to make videos about. Just say, yeah. They don't want you to be happy. They certainly don't. <laughs> There's not a single politician out there that wants you to be happy. What about Bhutan then? They've got the GNH, the Gross National Happiness Index. Yeah, didn't think of that, did you? Except maybe the one that's in office right now. First the light bulb and now this. It was like a modern day uh, Isaac Neutron. It's remarkable. What? I didn't even say anything. But I'm not surprised that CC likes him. <laughs> but the rest of them... They're all shit. I agree, and it could be worse, CC. You could have somebody running your country who's tanking the economy. That wouldn't be good, would it? I don't even know what the f I'm talking about this. And I forgot what the hell I was going to... Oh, oh, yeah, okay. The reflection. Okay, let, let's, let's go back to what I was originally talking about. That I can't understand why people don't understand reflections. It's a f***ing phone call. God damn it. Okay, an abrupt ending it is then. See you all tomorrow night at 7 p.m. GMTV Live, where we will be ranking conspiracy theorists. Love you. Bye. Just quickly before you go, I want to show you something. I've got a new pet. I bought a pet termite. You'll never guess what his name is. Clint Eatswood.